Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, I'm a disloyal person. This, this is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Thursday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. At Cuse Militia on the socials. Um, Go there, join the militia. Welcome back. Just like Syracuse State just did, do what, three games in five days? Doing three podcasts in five days? Not yeah. too shabby. Not too shabby. It's not a it's not a quarantine week long run stint, if you will. But it's it's close. Mm. It's a gauntlet, right? Yeah. It's not bad. I'm getting sick of seeing Joe's face. No, stop it. He's probably sick of Liar. seeing mine. That's fine. Syracuse. They did a great job in not sucking. You know, I think um, that went rather well. Last night, yeah. Joe. Syracuse, 15-8, and 9-7 and seven in the ACC. Now with two monster wins back-to-back. After a slow first half for Griffin, he went off for 19 in the second half, hitting three threes in a row, totaling 22 and 10 rebounds. A monster game for him, monster half for him. Uh, big rebounding night this time around for the Cuse, going plus six on the boards. Juxtapose that with the loss earlier in the year to Clemson, where they were negative 17. Speaking of 17... Marek and Q, they combined for 17 on the boards in the 64-54 win. You'll hear from us. We'll hear from you in fan feedback. Syracuse moves up to 54 in the Ken Palm rankings and 51st in the net. By the way, Clemson went from 33rd to 36. But the good news is NC State won last night. And they're going to go from 76 up 10 spots to 66. That makes that game again at NC State a quad one game. So... Mm-hmm. That's good news. Okay. Yeah. And that's a huge jump. How they jumped that far, I don't know. I don't understand how you move that far. Generally, when I'm watching this thing day to day, teams aren't jumping that much, but that's what it has there today. So mm-hmm. Q Swimming beat they they beat Boston College sixty seven to sixty one. In the <laughs> second round of the ACC tournament. They're gonna go ahead and they're gonna play Florida State tomorrow at two thirty. So yeah. Beat Boston College for the third time this year. Yeah, that's you know something. Syracuse and Sienna didn't play. Oh, really? Today, yeah. Oh, I don't okay. know why, but uh, she didn't play, and um, they won. And now they're going to try. They played fl- at Florida State earlier in the season, lost by fifteen. So hopefully, we get a little uh, revenge game there tomorrow at two thirty. Yeah. So, speaking of beating three in a row, we may, and we'll talk about it, but. There's a chance we could play NC State. I was rooting for them yesterday for two reasons against Notre Dame. Of course, we want them to win last night anyway. We want to make that a quad one game. Now we're solidly in there, so feel good about that. At least we got that because at the presser last night, right before that game, we didn't. We were 0-6 still. Right. So, Mm -hmm. anyways, that is all good. Let's hear what Coach had to say after the win. Has there been any discussion about adding a game on Saturday for you guys with the with the conference, or would you even want to at this point? Uh, we're pretty beat up. Um, I don't. I think there's games all scheduled. I haven't seen that. You know, any games have canceled yet for Saturday, but we've just had a, a difficult week. I mean, we play. You know, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday is tough for our team. I think it would be very hard to play a game Saturday for us. And I certainly don't want to play somebody we played twice already. That makes no sense to me. Hey, Coach, a common uh, thought out there is that uh, these two wins, North Carolina Clemson, uh, were really important for your NCAA tournament resume. Sure. Can you give me an opinion on that? I'm sure they're important. <laughs> Where do you think your teams? I don't look at that because I see teams that, are, the, the, I see a team that's 0 and 8 in, on the road this year, and they're in, they're in the tournament or on the edge. I don't pay any attention to that stuff anymore. I see teams with losing, even winning or losing records that are still in there. I mean, it's 
all that stuff is just speculation. All I know for sure is I think today, after, I think we're 11 and two in quad two and three win games, which is pretty good. You know, we haven't won quadrant one games, but uh, we've won all those in two and three. We've had no bad losses. I think they're getting better. They still make some mistakes, and that's normal, but I think they're getting better. I think our guards are rotating really well. Our guards did an unbelievable job tonight. They were the key. They got to the shooters. They got right to the shooters from the very beginning. Didn't let them get comfortable. And uh, Hemingway got a couple in the corner that said, you know, forward-center combination of things. But I, I think our whole team has is, is gotten better. But, but, but if I had played Jesse and Kodari, we'd probably be 22-2 and two now. I just didn't see that. And I couldn't figure that out by myself after 45 years. I need a reporter to figure that out who's never played basketball and is five foot two. Uh, go ahead, Anthony, with your question. Well, neither team could make anything. <laughs> Basically, is how the game started. They missed everything, and we missed everything. And uh, it was just tough. You know, it was just tough. Um, Robert hit a, a big three, and then he hit the two free throws. Those were big points in that first half. Those were really big. But like I said, I don't know anything, but both these guards have to play and have to help us. But I've only been here 50 years, so I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. And I love it. My son tells me all the Twitter comments against me. I just want you to know I don't follow Twitter. We had a, somebody that Twittered a lot the last four years, and I don't believe too much in that medium. You even call that a medium? All right, the coach montage is brought to us by the title sponsor for the Q's Militia. That's Bet Online. Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action NBA, college basketball, NHL, NASCAR baseball coming got tournaments coming up everything is there bet online even covers awards tv shows and reality tv real time updated odds and props and almost anything you can imagine bet online has you covered for all the news scores and odds it's the best way to place your bets and it's free to sign up head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit use the promo code armchair that's a 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit use the promo code armchair bet online your online sportsbook experts thank you bet online okay joe let's do this so let's do it let's do it i didn't put the normally i put the the kind of coach coaches wrap up of the game in the beginning of that but it made it too long because there's a couple of good things i think that is worth talking about so uh, adding a Saturday game, Joe, coach makes obviously a very good point, and we would love to see one. We talked about this at the, in the last show. After the North Carolina game, I think it would be good to to schedule one and get some scrub in there. You get a few few days, we mentioned, to get to get caught up on some of the injury stuff and, get, and heal some of the bumps and bruises and just recoup a little bit. But, you know, they are they, – they're just barely getting by. Uh, some of these and you know with Kadari obviously played less minutes than he's had than he has been playing with 18 which is it says a lot but you know obviously we want these guys ready for the ACC tournament so it's kind of a catch-22 Joe what do you think yeah I think um, I know that I spoke earlier in the week about having a scheduled game and wanting that scheduled game just trying to get one in there but um, after seeing you know, obviously the three three games in five days and Mark Kadari with a fractured finger and Quincy yeah. and yeah, Mark and everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that. Uh, I mean, I can't speak for coach, but as far as a fan goes, I mean, I like the way that they've been playing the last couple games. I like the way that we've been uh, rotating guys and, and getting different guys in there and going with the hot hand and kind of going with the matchups and everything. And honestly, like I, I think that. Um, it's one of those things where we got to we got to go into this ACC tournament healthy Hot. because Loosened we can go up. on a little run. We can go on a little run. Loosen up. Right? Give them you give them you give them Thursday, you give them Friday. Right? You go you play a Saturday game. Make it I mean whatever. Let's just say hypothetical, right? Just spitball. 
play an, an afternoon or an evening game if you could. And, you know, you, you stay loose. You stay in a rhythm. I mean, I feel like we've talked so much about it, especially lately, especially coming into the North Carolina game, about how we want these guys to play as a team. Well, dude, they actually played really well as a team yesterday. I mean, right. obviously, Alan Griffin was the star with 22 points, having a 19-point uh, second half, and, you know, a double-double for him, three blocks. I mean, it, 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 he was just great. But that yeah. was a team effort. The defense, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But, um, you know, I would like to see a Saturday game. But I do – I do. it is kind of a catch-22. I think either way, it could be good. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, first off, you, you're putting your neck out there because a loss would be bad. Exactly. That's another thing. And, yeah. and then on top of that, like I said, I think that – I think that we're – the coaching staff probably is in a position where they kind of like the way that they've played. And I think they'd rather them be rested and healthy going into the ACC tournament versus possibly, um, you know, another injury or another tweak on a Saturday game, which that all of a sudden becomes a must win because a loss kills us. Yeah. A loss kills us. It's definitely a momentum killer as well. And so, yeah, yeah, when you, when you, when you think about it in hindsight, you know, we want to watch them play. We're fans. We want to watch him play, but I think I think the healing up is not a bad idea at this point. Obviously, a fractured right. finger is not going to heal up, but Kadari's bumps and bruises, Quincy's bumps and bruises might be good. So, right. Uh, all right. Uh, he was asked about the tournament, asked about the tournament, and you know you're not going to get a real straightforward answer out of him. Obviously, these two games mean a ton, a ton. Winning two out of the last three, and we talked, we were thinking maybe get one of them. At some point, right. you know, and we got two out of the last three and two big ones, two home ones, but two big ones. So right. with that said, Joe, you and you and I and James were talking earlier a little bit and, you know, you kind of think that, you know, their resume is a little bit and you've talked about it here. We talked about it last last show when and, and when right. you look at everything when, and, and put everything into perspective as far as even the net rankings. But some of these records and the way some of these guys have played and maybe possibly opt outs. And then you add in possible covid protocol things that maybe hurt people in the tournament. You feel like one win it could solidly put Syracuse into this thing. Yeah. I mean, you never know. You know, there's going to be more teams because, again, I, I don't I know the Ivy League. I, I, I want to say there's more than one, but I know at least the Ivy League, they they canceled. So, I mean, there's at least going to be one bubble spot uh, uh, open and uh, everything is just, again, so just up in the air. You know, I'm looking up and down the Ken Palm and the net rankings and you're looking at teams that have only played 11, 12 games. St. Bonaventure, who's 34th in Ken Palm and they're 13 and four. Majority Maybe. of it is. Can you can you qualify with the, they should have set a threshold with with the number of games played. There should have been a threshold set. Yeah, because I just know that there was a lot of just teams that didn't play non conference and obviously with COVID and everything. So um yeah, I mean there's a lot there's a lot that goes into it. And um can you, to be perfectly honest I, I just think to be perfectly honest with you, uh this year more than any, I think that <clears throat> the committee's gonna have the freedom to kind of put the teams in there that they want. I think that they're going to be able to have an explanation for everybody putting in pretty much any team, yeah. right? And yeah. um, could yeah, make it more exciting think. to a certain extent too. And if and if you decided not to play non-conference, why would you all of a sudden even think about going to the NCAA, NCAA tournament? I mean, Duke <laughs> Duke opted out of non-conference. Now that now it's okay for them. They're okay playing in the tournament. I mean, that stuff's weird to me, Isn't right? It? I just, that's just me. I mean, if you want to be rational about it and you want to be consistent, it tells me. I mean, just. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. No, well, so, in hindsight, it doesn't because I think that there were some coaches in the beginning of the year. Uh, I mean, you remember when we played? Who was it? Buffalo, or it was somebody that we played, and they didn't have the uh, the same like situation. Oh, as far they didn't as have the, the same protocols. The, the, yeah, yeah, and like contact yeah, and that's tracing what, and everything the like that, right? That's what so, screwed us for the, those couple games there, right? After yeah, that. and I think that there was a situation where um, I think teams <laughs> thought that once you got into conference play, then the, the kids were going to be a little bit more protected and, and you were going to be able to understand the contact tracing and who can play and who can't play. But I, I guess that kind of just all fell apart. So, 
Um, yeah, in hindsight, probably not the greatest move, but yeah, it's it's, it's going to be tough. And I'll tell you what, like I said, this is like the one year that they're going to be able to get away with that and be able to put in the to teams. justify to justify teams that are that are not in high up right. in the net and thing like things like that. Yeah, right. And, and I'm sure their ratings are going down, and they want to try to make the most exciting. exciting yeah tournament as they possibly can especially after missing it last year right so oh, and there's absolutely. no doubt in my mind when you look at our team um there's money obviously to be made. with with history with past history of the ncaa tournament and how we can go in and make runs um against teams that aren't used to our two three zone but also uh just the fact that when you look at our team and how we can score and some of the things that we can do i mean you can't tell me that you know, when you look at us on paper, you can't tell us that, like, it's a better team than what it was in the beginning of the year. And we have players that are more ready now than they were in the beginning of the year. And um, I think that we're a dangerous team right now. Yeah, I mean, we are seem to be hitting our stride at the right time. I know it's trite. I know I've said it about other teams, but it seems to be true right now. Well, yeah. Very much. And when you look at, when you look at basketball, I mean, right now we're talking about yeah, if, if we would have went undefeated at home and won that Pittsburgh game, like, People have to understand when we lost to Pittsburgh, they were up near what a quad one, quad two. So I don't even remember right now, but it, it, Pittsburgh started out the year good. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. I want to say they were like nine and four or nine and three or 10 and four or something like that. So um, when we lost to them, it wasn't looking like it was going to be that bad of a loss. But now they've lost some games. They had some. Obviously, some things internally happened. Had two players transfer with uh, Tony and, and Johnson, so um, that's not the same team. No, it's not the same team. But I would still say, like like Coach said, I don't think we really have a bad loss. We have no Mm-mm. quad four losses. We're I think we're good in quad three too, aren't we? Um, yes, I think we are. I I believe we are. Uh, d- double check that, but I believe we are. It, it coach just went over it. I believe. I believe most of our losses are obviously quad two, quad one. So, uh, correct me right. if I'm wrong. But uh, g- guards and defense. So the the activity in the zone yesterday is something that I've been looking for, and everybody's been looking for all year. Super active, super fast. Um, just really good, really good. Everybody stayed where they needed to be for the most part. You know, of course there's going to be, you know, some mix ups here and there, but right. Joe, the defense last night was excellent. Excellent. I mean, Clemson only Clemson's not a high scoring team anyway. They only average about what? 60 low sixties, but the defense looked good. Joe Gerard looked good. Look good. He, I mean, he had, by the way, Joe Gerard had an uh, offensive rating of 130 according to Ken Palm. So, which is really good. Yeah. And um, he had what seven assists? Seven assists. Yeah. Yeah. So very good. And Joe can do that. We've seen we've already seen him do that. And we've said he should do that. That and playing off the ball is kind of Joe's game. I mean, a, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, not force and stuff is where Joe's really good. But Yeah, I, I think I saw a different Joe yesterday. Than the last couple games, yeah. I noticed. I, I, I tried to pay fair. attention early when he got taken out mm-hmm. after the four minute mark. Body language. First four minute timeout. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I tried to pay attention to the body language and and everything like that. And um, he was definitely. You could tell that he was he was definitely uh, you know making an effort to do better in in that category. And uh, it looked like he was handling coming off of the bench or you know losing minutes to Kadari a little bit better yesterday than uh, in previous games. So, um, again, I think yesterday, yeah, you, you, at first for free, I'm not trying to say that the, the players – you can try, but but be unsuccessful, right? If you don't got a defense that's working with each other and they're not, you know, moving together and communicating well, and everything like yeah, that, we, you just it doesn't mean you're not trying. It's just they're not doing it right, right? Yeah, well, we talk a lot about we talk a lot about when we talk about the guys playing. I think we primarily focus on offense playing as a team. But you know, it's a it's a solid point to make that you know defensively, it's probably even more important. Um, so, oh well, yeah. So I mean, Ken Palm's got us 29th in adjusted offense. Uh, we have players that can score. Again, there's been times in games this year where we have had problems scoring, but I don't, that's not our biggest problem. Our biggest problem has been defense and rebounding and, uh, 
you can just kind of tell that that's starting to come together because you can start to see the effort now and you can see it better because they're actually playing together and things are starting to click. Uh, And with the effort, you're seeing them dive on the ground, dive for balls. There were times, and, you know, coaches can say what he wants. We've seen times this year where they weren't putting in as much effort as the other team. Absolutely. In the last two two games, not the case. Not not the case at all. 14 assists on 21 buckets, by the way. It's really good. Again, that's two two games in a row. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, The coach being coach I got down here, and that is Mm. the – the – Secondhand answer, part two to Matthew Gutierrez's question, which I didn't even put the answer to that in there. And I quite frankly forgot what it was because here's the thing. Look, I know that there are people who see that or hear that or read about that, which it was written about plenty yesterday yeah. uh, and into this morning th- today mm-hmm. and that are going to say, you know, this is this stuff here is just trash. This is why I don't like coach. This is why, you know, I can't stand them and I want them re- to retire. Well, I agree to disagree because this is why I love coach. And I want to be entertained. Do you want to be entertained? Yes, mm-hmm. I do. That's why I watch the pressers. Okay? That's why I watch the pressers. And yeah. nobody this entertains. Year's been a good one. Yes, it's been great. It's been gold. And nobody entertains. Like, Coach, that's why the beginning of this show starts with Coach Presser Clips. I love it. There's nothing else for me to say. I, I don't care. I enjoy it because he does not give a crap. And when I'm 74 or however years old he is, 75, whatever, that's me. I am not. I'm going to give. You only z- hope to be that, right? I only hope to be that cool. Yeah. I know people don't like it, but I'm sorry, guys. I love it. I think it's great. Whether or not it's true, I don't know if Matthew Gutierrez is five foot two. I have no idea. Who cares? No, me either. It's funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. I mean, and, yeah. and look, let's be honest. Jesse Jesse was no good yesterday. He was in for two minutes, two falls. Yeah. I mean, now he didn't get a second chance. Now he could have been. He could have been didn't coming. Need he could, to. He he could have come in and whatever, but I guarantee you to fall out. Guarantee you. Well, so is he ready? I, we, I mean, I, look, look, I don't coach, know. Coach gets backed up. <laughs> coach gets backed up by the things he says constantly. All you have to do is look for it. And so I don't question the guy. I take what he says for what it's worth, and most of the time it's worth something. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I mean, we've said it from the we've known this. We know what this is. We know what this is about. Uh, coach is going to play people based off of practice. We know this. And True. they're coaches, and they are paid professionally to evaluate players and to coach their team and win games. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to throw it out there that if anybody can play to help win games or they can do something different, then Coach is going to do that. And that? if he doesn't play somebody – I trust in the fact that uh, there's a reason why. Right. So and I just don't. I just don't understand even the reporters going at going after even hitting that little point. You know, I mean, I know. on top of the fact of obviously the uh, the question and his answer to uh, Gutierrez um, after the North Carolina game, which we talked about. Yeah, that was what started um, it all. Well, yeah, and so <laughs> um, on, on Monday, Gutierrez, and a part of it was that he tweeted um, that the orange would be somewhere around 17-5 and five and in the field of 68 if reserves Jesse Edwards and Kadari Richmond had logged more minutes throughout the season. Right, how do you so prove that, that? I mean, So that was part of it, too. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and, and who's to say? Can you have an opinion? Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody can have an opinion. Sure. Yes, absolutely. But, but I don't think Jesse really hit his stride until he really showed us he hit his stride. That's just me. Who knows if he even hit his stride? Maybe he Who's just came it? in and exactly. had an okay two games, right? Exactly. Well, I mean, I think he's definitely doing better. I think so. I oh, think that's yeah. definitely fair to say. Okay. All right, moving on. Love it. Anyways, I know you guys, some of you guys don't. That's okay. <laughs> Agree to disagree. I still love you guys. Uh, coach, slam Twitter. Is it a medium? Is it a medium? I don't even know. Is it a medium? Uh, Twittering. 
Twittering. Is that a new term? I think it's a new term. Uh, Twitter's hot garbage most of the time. I don't blame Coach for being on there. I read so much nasty stuff about him on Twitter. Uh, I can just picture Buddy sitting there reading it to him and them laughing about it and just blowing it off because really that's all it is. Yeah. Twitter is a cesspool most of the time. And I've said it before. I wouldn't be on Twitter if it wasn't for this show. I I'm, no, I, 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 I I might now during games. I'm still because not. I, because I'm so you're a liar. <laughs> be, I might now during games because I because I do love the interaction with fans and reading everything and and stuff like that. But yeah, the place is a dump. And Facebook is Facebook is most of the time too. If you read any of the stuff in these groups, it's just the same crap on repeat. So, anyways. It's excellent. I enjoy it. <laughs> Anything else, Joe? Mm-mm. No, that's it for the montage. It's time to hear from you, the loud mouths from the loud house. You guys know what to do at the end of every game. We'll ask for your thoughts on the game. Go there. Leave them. We'll check them out. We'll bring them here. I did get a DM today, an interesting DM. That was basically, I'm going to sum it up, kind of, and it's uh, an anonymous listener who will go unnamed. I don't know if this is big news or not, but I guess uh, got a, uh, a message from someone he screenshotted and they, they sent it over. So I, I guess there's going to be a limited amount of fans for the lacrosse game coming up, rumored. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, they're going to look to be basically, you know, probably more and more as the season goes on. Right. And, and then basically looking to just open her up wide in the fall, which is good. I guess there's no concessions, which is fine. You know, people were, well, we don't need people drinking and being at the game and getting stupid. Okay, well, don't serve beer there. <laughs> you know, that's, right. that's very easy, right? So yeah. anyways, look forward to that. Look forward to that for lacrosse. Obviously, lacrosse is going to be a big deal, in my opinion. So, yeah. Right? Seems to be, right? And looks like it. Seems to be, yes. Absolutely. Seems to be. That's going to be something, too, that's going to be a lot of fun to keep up with kind of in the off season after the tournaments are over. And I'm not going to steal any thunder, but you can always go to SU Lax Pod and get all of the latest SU Lax updates. And as we're doing shows and Dan is doing his podcast, we'll let him throw in his two cents here. So, anyways, uh, Mahir, top fan on Facebook. I don't want to nitpick, but the reason Clemson hit those threes in the second half was because hands were down. Can't do that. But other than that, welcome back, Joe. We missed you. A really good win. Alan Griffin needs to blow on his fingers because he was hot. Uh, Rest up, ice up, and practice hard. Great, great win. Please play like this on the road. Yeah, see, so neutral court in the ACC tournament, going to be a big deal. Okay, especially with seeing that we don't have many road wins. What do we got? Boston College? What was the the other one? Miami? Or was Miami home? I can't remember. But anyways, not a whole lot going on there. But, you know, Syracuse is going to give up a couple threes. It wasn't bad. It wasn't it wasn't terrible. It could have been a whole lot worse. And they were mostly in the second half. And Allen Allen was hot. So um, NC State NC. Oh, duh. That's right. We just talked about that. So stupid. Uh, t- top fan, Brian on Facebook. I like Braswell out there with Kadari and Buddy. Uh, Kadari uh, breaks down the defense and has two great shooters to pass the ball to. A different wrinkle than we had we have seen. Wouldn't like to see, but would like to see more of that overall great game by the team. Go Cuse. Yeah, a team, a great team win for Syracuse. And if they can click like this going into the ACC tournament, even if we got to take a little bit of time off, rest up and get ready, go through some practices, I think it's going to be huge. So yeah. you know, it, it's, it's just going to depend. You know, Quincy, it seems like someone's always having a big half somewhere. And that's the one thing if I'm going to nitpick is that you, can, you, ha- you have most of the time one guy that has a good half. Well, I, I need more of that. I need someone to have a good first half and someone to have a good second half or someone to have both or something. Please. No, uh, judge on the, how some of the games have been going. I'm just glad that we were close. Yeah, the slow start stuff, which was also in the montage. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, it's, it's, it's like perpetual to Syracuse basketball. It's like you pretty much know 
We're going to come out. We're going to miss a bunch of shots. It's going to be Brick City out there. And we're going to go down, or we're going to have to watch just Brick City on both ends of the court, which is what we right. did last night. No one could hit the freaking side of a barn. And, you know, you've got to deal with, you know, that. But, you know, it usually picks up. And when it does, it usually stays there. So, you know. Uh, Pat on Facebook. Not a top fan, Pat. A uh, little disappointed, but he says just win, baby. And you know when someone says just win, baby, that's how you get on fan feedback. So, <laughs> shout out. Oh to, yeah, for you. Shout dude. out to Patrick. So, uh, top fan Jesse. Good, good game. Glad Kadari was okay and able to not have to play thirty. I like Joe a lot more when he's a distributor rather than a shooter. Alan Griffin looked like he was having fun out there. Yeah, I'm. Uh, thankfully, we didn't have to rely on. Kadari as much as as I thought we maybe would have needed to. Syracuse really did a yeah. good job of kind of pulling away and staying. I think I think the closest they got after they really after they made it double digits was double digits. I don't think they broke it back down into single digits. It was going from ten to fourteen to ten to sixteen, and yeah. they just couldn't they just couldn't chip away at it. And you know, just great great hustle on defense, excellent job. And oh no. Gave gave Kadari a little bit of rest. We came out in the in the second half and just kind of went out like bandits, you know. Uh, we just made sure that we kept our defense up, and that's really what helped. I mean, we scored what 30, 32 points in the first eleven minutes, ten eleven minutes of the second half. Um, when you're scoring like that, that's tough. And you know, basketball is a game of runs, and I don't think yeah. Clemson really ever had one. Clemson did they? Well, no, not not really. They did chip. They they started to chip back in, but like I said, they only got to ten. They right. went from sixteen to ten. It just seemed to, to me like the way that they were playing offense, and then how we kind of exploded in the first half of the second half. Like, it just what do you think about? Like was, what, what do you think? Yeah, no, I get your point. Uh, what, what do you think about? What do you think about the uh, the 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 holding the ball, the foot off the gas mentality? On, on offense that we seem to see a lot of. Like, it's kind of an old-school method, you know, wear down the clock, use as much of the shot clock as you can. And, and I like that, but a lot of times when we do that, we don't score. So we're just going down and we're wasting, you know, the, we're wasting the shot clock, which is fine. But at the end of that, you have to score. Otherwise, it become it just becomes right. redundant and stupid. And so they, well, they never set up anything on offense to really run something with eight seconds left. I mean, what do you what do you make of that? I mean, I just want your to opinion. me. It just all depends on who you got out there and, and kind of when you start doing it. Um, there's just like I said, I don't know about you. I don't really care who starts one way or another. But like, there's sometimes when Joe's out there as as the point for the main and that's against certain teams where he dribbles fifty times. And I just I get I'm I'm like nervous sometimes he's frantic I'm not always so confident when Kadari's out there there's just like a calmness right yeah it's and a little like, yeah it's a little more he chill. could be at half court with ten seconds to go and you know he can drive I it have, to the rim I have the I have the confidence that he's going to be able to either make a decent shot or take a decent shot or get another shot for somebody else because he can drive by anybody he can he drive, even hundred percent that's his shot he, his shot is getting into the lane and using his moves to just break ankles and get to the rim but he everybody gravitates toward him yeah so he can and kick he's it back so out. good at the kick out and mm-hmm. finding the open people that it's just um I, with 10 seconds to go and when we got that type of lead and the, the certain amount of time left and you're talking about maybe like four minutes about that if you're up double digits i'm okay with that i'm okay with that okay but I my, think it's a it's a situational thing and a personnel thing. So I hate it, and it, I think it's because my stepdad, my stepdad, my pops, uh, he hated that. He hated it. He, <laughs> he would get so pissed, and I'm I'm like, all right, I'm right there with you. This is boring. Cause but if you're, yeah, it, you got to score boring. though. You got to score. You got to score. You got to score. But at the same time, if you're if you're if you're taking fast shots, then you're getting them more opportunity there's more time left in the game like it's just it's a strategic thing and yes i get it you need to make shots but when you have that type of lead and i mean think about it every single time we're carrying it if we just went in 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 shot then you're talking about two different possessions where now i mean you're just giving them extra time just in case if you start missing and then they get hot so 
as you're slowing it down, you're just lessening the chances and the opportunities that they're going to have to actually come back. So now every single realistically, you're right. like, yeah, you got to make the, the points. But every single their possessions now are more important. Yeah. Now they have to score every single time. True. All right. We will be back to finish up fan feedback and give you our thoughts on the ACC tournament coming up. Mike McAllister put out all of the situations and scenarios. We'll talk about that right after this. There you go. Make as much noise with that can as you as you possibly can. Fucking A. Jeez. When are you even number? Why? <laughs> I'm trying. Got, I'm trying to be professional. <laughs> I'm trying to remain professional here, and oh, you're okay. you're 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 hitting your can against your mic. You're f- flipping it on. You're grabbing your mic by the fingers. You grab the mic over here, bro. See how you can move the mic like this without putting your hands all over it. Golly, got your cans getting stuck in your mustache. Things hanging below your lip. Get the, clean it up. Oh, it's, it's, it's all coming off this weekend. Oh, that's ridiculous. All right. A couple things. Quickly. Bet online. You know bet online. You know that it's the fastest, the easiest, best way to bet on all of your sports action. Right, Joe? Right. Exactly. Sure. Professional Basketball League. Okay. NCAA. NBA. All right. The NHL. MLB. NASCAR. All the fun stuff. Coming up, go there, bet there. They even cover awards, TV shows, and reality TV, real-time updated odds and props, and almost anything you can imagine. Bet Online has you covered for all news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Head over to the website today. Use your mobile device. Sign up and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use the promo code ARMCHAIR. That is a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use the promo code ARMCHAIR. Bet online. Your online sportsbook experts. Listen, ebay.com slash sneakers. Go there today. Whether rare dead stock or the latest release, find the exact shoe you're looking for on eBay with uh, as the original sneaker marketplace. eBay is the place to go to cop a pair you've been eyeing. And with eBay's authenticity guarantee, a team of independent professional authenticators perform a rigorous inspection of the sneakers you purchase before they're sent to you so you can shop confidently knowing the pair is the real deal. And for all of you sneaker sellers out there, eBay has eliminated selling fees on sneakers $100 plus, making it free to sell or flip your collection with other th- other sites taking as much as 25%. You're going to have a lot of extra money left for more sneakers. Check out ebay.com slash sneakers today. That's ebay.com slash sneakers. Check it out today. Thank you. ebay.com slash sneakers. Brace. Okay, where was I? Top fan, David. So off day tomorrow and a game on Friday versus Louisville, right? Let's just keep doing this every other day. Basketball thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the every other day. I mean, don't day, get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't mind it whatsoever. I don't mind it whatsoever. A, it's kind of giving me a routine. It's like you got a game one night, got a, got a podcast, podcast the next could, night. That, like, right? could you imagine if that's what it was? That's how we did this? Obviously, um, that's very hard for the kids to maintain at some point. But it's it's hard for this kid to maintain. Let's be honest. Did, I barely you prepared today. Kid? Can you tell? You? Yeah, I'm a kid. I'm a kid. <laughs> you act like a kid, but you're not a kid. <laughs> you're only as old as you act sometimes, Joe. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you crack your beer close to the mic, it gets some kind of reverb. Don't care. I know. Greg at Gregorian Rants on Twitter. Defense, defense with defense. Defense was superb. The effort and, ag- and aggression was relentless. Offense was fluid against a very stingy, cl- st- stingy Clemson defense. Stingy. Stingy. stingy, stingy. It is stingy, Joe, by the way. Stingy mm. Clemson defense. C- contributions from various guys. We need that Griffin each night. That Griffin. Best yeah. performance of the year. Put him uh, in the dance. Well, I don't know if that gets him in the dance, but no, I think you're not going to get that Griffin every night. No, you're not going to. He's, he's just he's just so good when he's good. But man, the one for ten, you know, the day before, <laughs> the two days before, 
And, right. and, and you, you know, that's, that's what you get when you get Griffin. But, yeah, the stingy Clemson defense. It's yeah. definitely stingy. It's stingy, yeah. Not as stingy as Georgia Tech's, but. True, true. Um, yeah. With Alvarado so. there. He's a stingy SOB. Oh, yeah. Those yellow jackets. They're very stingy. <laughs> but, um, no, Clemson, uh, yeah, their defense, we talked about that. Their defense is good, and we just found ways to find really good. mismatches. Really good. Their defense is really good. Yeah, we found ways to find to get mismatches. That's all they're really – that was the difference. That's what we've been doing the last two games. And what's been working with us is that we're forcing the other teams to – I mean, we're scoring, so they have to score with us, which means now they have to put – you know, they have to trade, you know, substitute offense for defense, which then puts them in vulnerable situations because now we have those mismatches on offense. So when we go big and we have Buddy and, and Kadari up there, um, I don't know how many teams in, in the country where are going to have a complete – you know, um, rotation that's going to be able to come in and guard all of the options that we have. So um, we don't need Buddy to do what he did in North Carolina every game or what Griffin did last night every game. We just need one person to do it and the rest to just contribute like they normally do. Yeah. Yeah. No, you get the mismatch, make the bucket. It doesn't matter who you are. You're all capable. They are all capable. I just, you know. It's the cohesion thing sometimes. Sometimes it's the trying too hard. And sometimes, it's like, the amount of shots close to the rim that are soft, there's just not enough whisper behind them, you know? Between I mean, Oh, between the bunnies we've missed around the rim and between the forced outside shots. And where do they always year, hit, I mean, Joe? Where do they always hit? Back the, rim, the, the, No, they hit the front of the rim all the time. It's never Mark is known for just a, not enough touch. It's, it's like baby's breath. Think. <laughs> um, all right. At Die Hard Q's fan, we win one or two in the ACC tournament. We are in. He's on the right track here. Man, looking back at that pit loss up 16 at home, they didn't have Champagne, and we lost. That hurts. Yes, that game was the steaming pile of Cuomo that we talked about earlier. And we've talked about and went back to that game numerous times. The horrible inbounds pass by Marek that was just thieved away. It was just, yeah. it was a mess down the stretch. We got flustered and we lost our composure. That's what happened that game. They just lost their composure. The effort from Pitt, they just wanted it and they got it. Like you mentioned, not the same team. And that's unfortunate, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. So um, that one does hurt. Yeah. And I think when you look at it, we're lined up pretty much to either play Duke or North Carolina State in the ACC tournament. Uh, we win our first game in the ACC tournament, and then we don't make the NCAA tournament. Then I think that that's the game that you point to. That's yeah, the game you I have still to don't point think to. it's. I, I I agree with you. I don't think if it's a deal breaker. It, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I agree with you. But I don't think that's enough. I, I don't think it's a bad loss. At the time, those guys were good. They didn't have Champagne in there. But when they all were playing together, they were tearing it up, man. They were doing a really good job. That's what was so surprising about Adis Tony and what's his noggin there opting out or going into oh, Xavier Johnson. Xavier Johnson going into the transfer portal. So at Coach Tim HPB, good win after North Carolina. Guards played guards played well. Joe's minutes better, but wouldn't surprise me if he transferred knowing writing is on the wall with Kadari. I hope he doesn't. Griffin with a good second half offensively, but his defense is suspect. Uh, Quincy and Buddy solid mark, solid even, though no offense. Well, the things Mark does sometimes, he doesn't even need an offense. But, you know, he's just, you know, we've talked about that at nauseum. So... You know, eight rebounds, I think. So, really good. Really good, really. And yeah. he just, you know, offensively, sometimes he's just not there. But Joe ain't going nowhere. When we've heard when we've heard t- talks about, first of all, we've heard Coach say how many times, we need all three guards. We need all three guards. They're all going to play. They're all going to play yeah. solid minutes. They're all going to contribute big to the team. It's. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a situation where Joe's like, "Oh, I'm. I'm not playing 36 minutes. I'm out of here." I don't think so. 
I don't think so. I think Joe no. needs to like much like Griffin. I feel like Joe needs to find his his niche. We thought it was threes. I don't know. That's up in the air for me right now. I'm not sold on it. What about you? When he can shoot, when, but he, when he's on, he's on. It's a confidence issue. I know. It's like the, I know. It's like with Cooney. It was the same damn thing. It's a yeah. confidence thing. Which and to clear, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm just saying it's a confidence thing, which is something that's an it's an inconsistency. I don't know if it can be fixed. You know, I mean, you get in your own head. That's that's that takes you know. That's that's, that's a you an, problem. Kind of an, that's an attitude thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a you problem. Well, that's though, one of those it? things where it's like, look, I mean, if you let it, you let it continually infecting you. If you dwell then... on it during the game, you're gonna, you're not going to improve that game. There's no way. When once you're down and you're going to dwell on it and you're going to force stuff and you're going to dribble around like a maniac, it's just it. You make it worse. That's what it, it, right. it just compounds throughout a game when you try to make up for it. You're trying too hard. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it can bleed into the next game. Well, that's absolutely true, and I think we've probably seen some of that. Yeah, probably. No, I mean, what I was going to bring up was I just wanted to clear up that the whole Pittsburgh thing. Um, when we played them at home, we uh, both of us were six and two, and then the next time we played them at Pittsburgh, uh, they were seven and two because they had a. If you remember, they had the coronavirus thing, so they didn't even play a game in between the times that we played. So. Like yes, on their they schedule, played us back on their to back. Schedule, they played us back to back. That's even right. There was a couple, like a week or so. That's right. Um, in between, and uh, yeah. Wah, so wah, they were wah. six and two and seven and two earlier in the season when when we played them. So, it, like I said, it didn't look like a situation where that team was going to be as bad as they are now. Yeah, well, I'm missing some players. So uh, at one, Kev Nash. Okay, give it up for Kev. Was at work, missed 39 minutes of the game. Two, back on the bubble. Three, two wins in the AC tur- tournament and we're dancing. Four, that first loss to Pittsburgh is going to haunt us. Five, uh, from looking at the box score, we got balanced scoring. Go Cures. Yeah. I mean, everybody's hanging on the pit loss, but absolutely. Back on the bubble, yeah. I mean, you, you know, the bubble talk. I, the, the bubble talk bothers me. I don't know why. I feel like we've just. I feel like we've always been in the bubble. We've lived in the bubble for like four years. Since this pod, since we started this podcast, since our fifth basketball season. Yes. I don't yeah. think we're ever we've lived solidly in, the bubble. in. I know. I mean, I think that's why I'm sick of it. And the only time that we didn't make it was what Andrew White, Gillen. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a good. Yeah. Do you think about that year and that team and? You think really? Some great wins. Yeah, yeah. The Duke win. The Gillen beat Duke at the dome. Oh, dude, NC State. Oh, the NC State Gillen, comeback. Gillen had like forty, 40 years points. Ago. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah. That was a good team, man. <laughs> we clung on to we clung on to Gillen and White in that one year. They made a huge impact. <sighs> imagine what we didn't had if we would have had if we didn't have them. Oh my gosh! Could you imagine? They were band aids. We would have been in wreckage. Absolute, absolute oh, yeah. wreckage. It would have been a mess. I'm, I'm along the look. NC State's won five in a row. Okay. Well, let's talk. Well, hold on, hold on. Let's back up. Okay. Okay. Save, hold that thought because this I is will this, save all th- that. Th- yes. this is where we're going right now. So we rooted for NC State. Looking ahead to the ACC tournament, we lo- rooted for NC State last night. Okay, because you know, I think it's a good matchup for Syracuse. Now we've beat them twice. So when Duke, North Carolina play, Joe, and you know another aspect to this, and you can bring it in. But when Duke, North Carolina play this Saturday, if UNC wins, we play NC State. If Duke wins, we play Duke. Now here's the scenario there. We either got to beat Duke, which sucks. And guys, I'm, I'm just, I, there's something about the matchup with Duke that sucks. Now, we didn't see – Mark Williams didn't see Jesse Edwards. He saw a lot of Mark. And I just don't know if Jesse can hang there anyway. And that guy that guy scares the living hell out of me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Matthew Hurt ain't too bad either. Also, NC State, it's tough to beat a team three times in a row, Joe. But, like you said, they're on a five-game win streak. 
And so was Clemson. And we handled them. I think NC State, I think Syracuse is a bad matchup for NC State. I just do. And we've handled them yeah. pretty decently. So go with what you were going to say, go ahead. That's the situation we're in. Right. And I, I just don't think either one is a – I mean, it's – they're decent wins is basically where I'm going. Uh, you beat Duke, knock them out of the ACC tournament, or you, you play NC State. Um, Which would be way, a quad think, one, which would be if we, if we played NC State in neutral court. Let me be, let me be sure here. Yeah, yeah. No. No, it would be a, it would be a quad two game on a neutral court. So, neutral is fifty one to a hundred. That's quad two. Neutral quad one would be one through fifty. So, but right. And where's Duke? In the net, you would ask me. I don't have it pulled up. Okay. No, I, I hear I you do. clicking so around. They're fifty eight. They're okay. fifty eight in NC State sixty six. Okay, so that's still a quad two game. In a neutral court. So yeah. So they're both well, quad at least two it's games. not a home game, right? So I just I look at it like I look at it like this way. I think we need obviously the first game. Uh if we win the first game, I honestly think that we got a shot, like uh, a legit shot at getting in. Um if we don't get in because we only win one game and then lose the next round, it's gonna be because of that Pittsburgh game. So if but if right Right. Now, if Pitt beats, when's Pitt playing UNC? That's a game, right? No. So the situation is this, is that we can only be seven or eight. Right. Okay. So we're, you know, if Duke beats North Carolina, we're playing Duke. Yeah. Which would suck. In my opinion, I don't want that. I'd rather have to beat NC State three times. If North Carolina plays... Or if North Carolina loses, or sorry, beats Duke, or sorry, if North Carolina, if North Carolina loses to Duke, okay, sorry, okay, and Clemson loses to Pittsburgh, Clemson was move, the one I was thinking of. I'm then sorry. Then we move up, we move up to Twice number seven. Six. We would move up to number seven. We would okay. jump North Carolina. Okay. And then we would end up probably playing the winner of NC State, Boston College, which would be a first round matchup on Tuesday. So it would be NC State, most likely. Right. So either way, one way or another, whether we play seven, we get the seventh seed or the eighth seed, we're, we're playing either Duke or NC State. So, but if we get a seventh so, seed, we can, what's that? Who would you rather play? NC State. Okay. For sure. Okay. The three in a yeah. row thing is, t- or, yeah, th- th- that's tough. That's a tall order. But I don't want to see Mark Williams. I really don't. I really don't. No, no. <laughs> hmm. So, okay. Well, that's where we I don't stand. Think Jesse, I don't think Jesse Edwards is ready for that either. No, he's not. And maybe there's people out there who think he is, but I would be very hard pressed to believe he could do something with that. I mean, you know. But again, I mean, you have to understand too that after playing them one time, looking back at the tape, seeing how we're playing now. Uh, the fact of how we played last time, you know that the players are going to be motivated. You know that they're going to know that this is a must win or an ACC tournament. You, like you said to me yesterday, it's go time. They know all this. And that Williams guy had pretty much all dunks. So you know that he had eight of part them. of that. Yeah. Part of that, that whole coaching, your, your whole coaching staff is going to be putting in a plan to make sure that they don't get those easy buckets. So yeah, you never but, really know. Um, I'm not. I don't. I'm not as afraid to play Duke as you are because I, I honestly think that our team's better than both teams. Um, but Duke has been playing better as of late, and I know that for them and even for NC State, I mean, NC State's on a five-game winning streak, and Duke is never going to go into an ACC tournament and not think they can win. So, um, either way, it's going to be a tough game, one way or another. I mean, we could talk about matchup this, matchup that. And all three teams out there are kind of in the same situation where it's going to be it's going to be a war. It's going to be a war, isn't it? Amazing though, just looking at this Syracuse team coming into this time of the year, and what kind of pressure they know they're under. I mean, we can sit here and talk about oh well, they don't think about the bubble. They don't think bull 
crap. Bull Cuomo. They do too. They think about it. They know in the back of their head what's going on, what they need to do. And they know, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's go time. It's, it's, it's amazing to me what these kids have done. This team has done battered and bruised, coming out of the trenches and just clawing and scraping by against uh, a, a good North Carolina team. And then really kind of just taking it to Clemson. Just amazing to me. So, yeah. so what mo- the things motivation can do. And the way that that defense was playing last night, I was just like sitting there like, and hey, you always think this. You're always like, well, where the hell has this been all year? Like, what the yeah. hell? But, you know, at the end of the day, it's that time of year. It's that time of year. It's time to go. It's time, it's time to start, stop the hero ball, play together, and look for, you know, like, how many times people were looking for, for the pass. Mark with a beautiful right. pass a couple times last night. And that's his thing. You know, that's what we need. And the hero ball stuff just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. That's a that's another thing that's kind of a band aid. You know, it just it's one of those things that's a desperation. It's like the press. It's just a desperation thing. Yeah. And um, so. No, well, you're seeing two. I mean, the last two games has been, I think, a product, obviously, of a team evolving, and kind of knowing that their backs against the wall. But honestly, I mean, I want to give kudos to this coaching staff because both these last two wins against these two teams that I don't think a lot of fans thought we were going to win these games. Um, no, the by the way, we, 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 we picked them both to win you and I, by the way, and we'll go over that we in did. a second. Yeah. Yeah. But this, both those games were the second time playing these teams and you could see in both games, the adjustments, the adjustments, um, how, like I said, some players have gotten better and the team has, has evolved as, as far as, playing together and granted it might just be the last two games, but it's, I mean, playing this way, getting those two wins and then getting healthy and getting some rest going to the ACC tournament. I mean, I, that's probably as positive about, I'm, I'm feeling about as positive as this team for this team. than I, I have probably all year. I, I would agree with that. I would agree. And yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, he's only been coaching or in, well, he's, only been coaching, coaching for 45, 45 years. years so, I mean, I don't know what he knows. If anything. Well, tell him. Tell him what to if, do. If for anything. Two, for well, you need to play. You need to play Jesse. Free Jesse, man. Free Kadari. Free Frank. Free, free Bull. Free everybody. Free them all. Play I mean, all. what are we doing? Why aren't we playing these guys? Why are they sitting on the bench? Why? Why is Sidibe sitting on the bench? <laughs> I mean, what does he know? He's old. He's angry. He's an angry old curmudgeon. He doesn't know anything. No. Come on, dude. Uh, obviously, this is, obviously, this is sarcasm. Yes. Uh, Joe, 63 to 60, Syracuse. I had 68 to 64, Syracuse. Both picked them to win. And, I mean, I'm just going to give you this one because I'm in a good mood. Because you, you were closer to the spread, which was 10 points. And you were closer there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you. But You're, both okay. both really good guesses though. What Our, was your guess again? Sixty eight, sixty four, and what I had seventy sixty three. Mm. So okay. they were both off a little bit on the score. But you had you had them winning by seventy or seventy seven, and I had them winning by four. So I'm gonna give it to mm. you. I'm gonna give it to no, you. I appreciate it, man. No problem, man. I'm feeling generous today. Don't ever forget that, okay? Because. <laughs> So I'm sure it's going to come back. It will. You know it will. Yeah. Just like yeah. all good things do. So yep. that is it. As soon as we know who is who Syracuse is going to be playing in the ACC tournament, you know, I know, Joe knows, we'll be back. Well, that'll be here. what, Saturday night? It'll be Saturday night. So that means we'll be back here. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll be back here Saturday night. Maybe we'll do a live selection Saturday for the ACC tournament. And we select who... They give us, basically. Thank you, Bet Online. Thank you, <laughs> eBay Sneakers. Thank you to all of you guys for hanging out with us. For Joe, I'm Sean. Wow. Peace.